hello everyone so it has been a while since i have done um a saturday morning bible study and i know it's not technically morning but um good afternoon wherever you are and this one's going to be very brief very very quick um but i am it really touched me this morning because what happened was i woke up it had to be for something this morning just like randomly and I was just like, Lord, why am I up so early on a Saturday? It's not like I have to get up and go to work this morning. It's not like I have anything pressing to do. And um, really, I think that I just needed that time with God because I have been going through so much. Um, I've been under so much stress and strain. I've been just extremely frustrated in my life recently. Um, and honestly, a lot of it has been about me not being where I want to be in my own life. I know I can't be the only person that understands what what it is that I'm talking about. You know, the whole, I should have been here by now, or I should have this by now, or I should be doing that by now. Um, and after a while, you just get really frustrated with yourself because you're like, man, I, you know, I know me in my own personal life, I have made some very bad choices. I have been in some very bad seasons. Um done some things been some places i had nowhere no business being and so i especially in my early 20s wasted a lot of time and in my teenage years coming right out of high school i wasted a lot of time doing things that i really had no business doing um living my life in ways i had no business living my life and so it's very frustrating when you come from a place of having wasted so much time because in your mind you feel like you ought to have you you know you ought to have this or you ought to be there and i actually was talking to my cousin about this the other day saying man i'm so frustrated because i should be here by now and when i look around at everybody else and i see what everybody else has and what everybody else is doing and what they've accomplished and where they are i really feel like i'm not doing everything that i should be doing in life and so um, a lot of times I wake up restless in the middle of the night just kind of thinking about what's going on in my life. And so when I woke up this morning, you know, I was laying there and I kept trying to go back to sleep and I couldn't. So finally I was like, okay, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Or what is it that you want to talk to me about? Um, and so as I lay there, I was like, okay, Lord, you must want to communicate with me about something you must be trying to kind of spend some time with me so I got up and I prayed and then I was like okay Lord what you know lead me in a direction of of something in your word that I'm needing um you know just lead me to a book or whatever crazy part about it is is that when you when in the bible says that when you ask and you believe when you come to god and you're believing that what you're asking him for will come to pass he will do it for you um and it also says that if you ask for knowledge that he will give it but you have to ask for knowledge from god being willing to accept whatever it is that he shows you right so i was sitting there praying and i was like okay lord you know lead me to um what i need to read and so I went to, because I've, I've really been trying to better myself and really be, live what it is that I am sharing with everyone. And and that's what I do. I mean, a lot of what I share and a lot of why I feel like I've been called a ministry is because I have um, been through some things in my life. And I feel like when God gives you a testimony or he brings you out, that you are to go and use that to be the salt and the light of the earth. So I was reading Proverbs 31 um, about the Proverbs. I, if, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of the Proverbs 31 woman. And it really is just about what a good godly woman should be. Um, and so I was reading that. And as I finished that, I was like, man, I've never really read Ecclesiastes. Like I, everybody's heard of it, but I've never actually taken the time to read it. So I started reading. Um, and I could not stop. And that's the, like the awesome thing about the Holy Spirit is truly he will lead you to the answers to whatever it is that you're seeking. He'll lead you to the answer in the word because I just started reading Ecclesiastes and it was exactly what I needed. Um, and there is so like there's so much meat and so much substance in it. I can't necessarily get through all of it right now because there are like I can't tell you how many points that I would love to broach out of Ecclesiastes. Um, but one of them is about timing and about God's perfect timing and about 
a a predestined order and timing to everything that we do because we weren't put on earth just to be here and to exist we were put here for a purpose and so because we were put here for a purpose that means that god has to have some order to our lives um he has to intentionally have certain seasons for certain reasons and and we think that things are happening you know, we we go through things and we go to God saying, oh my God, God, you know, God, this is happening, that is happening, as if he didn't already know it's happening. God already knows the season that you're in. He orchestrated it. Um, and me, like I was saying, I spent so much of my early life as a young adult wasting time, making wrong choices, being so wrapped up and caught up in people and my brokenness and trying to find my my identity and my worth and people and all kind of different things that now I'm at a place where I'm walking with God and it's like God I don't think I ever realized how much time I truly wasted I don't think that I ever realized um like being here now just how much of my life I spent doing the wrong thing and so it's you know it it's constantly because i'm 26 years old now you know and as women once we hit about that 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 mark we start looking around thinking i don't have no kids i don't have a husband um i don't have a family yet like what am i doing with my life um and so god the holy spirit led me here because i really needed the word uh regarding god's timing because the season that i'm in right now it's like lord why am i here and why am i going through this i was not expecting this you didn't give me no pre-warning you didn't holler at a sister and say hey listen you're getting ready to go through one of the toughest seasons you've ever gone through in your life get ready like lord you didn't give me no shout out you didn't slide in a dm and try to give me no warning or nothing like this season of my life came out of nowhere but it was exactly what i needed and so um also briefly i want to say something about comparison because you guys have heard me ramble on and on about um I should have had this or I should have had that or I should be here and I should be there a lot of that honestly is about comparison like I said once we hit a certain age we all do but especially as women once we hit a certain age and we look around at what our friends have and what other people have we start to compare ourselves to those people we start to say man am I really doing what I should be doing in life should I be doing more should I be doing less should I be doing something else like am I not doing what it is that I'm supposed to be doing in my life. And um, there is this scripture. And it's cr my, my overall thing here is going to be about Ecclesiastes 3. But as I read to chapter 4, there's a scripture. And it's, it's in chapter 4, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 4. And it says, Then I saw that all of the toil and the skill that men work with comes from man's envy of his neighbor and as I read it this morning I was like wow I, and I never thought I never thought that at this age that I, it's not really for me an envy of people when you look at where you are in life like I do now especially being 26 and being frustrated and looking back on all the years that I wasted and looking around at everybody else that I know and love I'm like that person has a family that person has kids that person has a husband that person has a degree and I'm not where I want to be I'm not where they are is really what I'm saying and when you start to compare yourself to other people that's really what you're saying it's not you saying I'm not where I want to be. It's really you saying I'm not where they are. So I feel inadequate with where I am because I don't have what that person has and I'm not where that person is and I'm not on that level yet. But the reason that I'm talking to you about timing is that right there. Comparing yourself to other people and the season in their life that they are in is going to always be your downfall because what you start to do is you start to doubt where it is that God has put you. You start to doubt what God has called you to do because you're so busy worrying about what somebody else has going on that you're not concerned with the season that God has put you in. Everything that is happening in your life right now, I don't care if it hurts. I don't care if it feels good. I don't care if it's what you wanted or what you didn't want. It's exactly what God has for you. And it's what God wants you to be doing right now. So as I look around and I'm like, God, I'm not where I want to be. What I'm really telling God is, God, I'm not where everybody else is. And how crazy is that to go to the God of the universe that made you and knows what he put in you and say, 
God, I'm not where I want to be, which is really where everybody else is. And he's saying to you, but you're exactly where I have put you. You're where I need you to be. You're where I've called you to be. The crazy thing about it is that in this season of my life where I feel like I'm doing the least or I feel like I'm not doing as good as I could be doing People around me are constantly saying to me, I'm proud of you. You don't know how much um, you bless me. You don't know how far you've come. Like, I remember who you were and I see who you are. And it makes me hungry for God. And I'm like, what? Y'all have no idea where I have for my life to be right now, where I would rather be in my life. But it's crazy because when people say that to me, I look at that and I'm like, man, God, I'm really exactly where you've called me to be because I don't ever really pay attention to people paying attention to me. Like you never think that you're impacting other people when you're going about your day and you're minding your business and you're just living your life. But it's true that your life is really a living testimony and a living witness because people are watching you and you don't even know they're watching you. You don't know that somebody else is going through a breakup and they're watching you while you're going through your breakup trying to figure out how do you have the strength to get up and go about it every day? How is it that this person is brokenhearted, but they still have the strength to get up and go to work every day and smile and be happy? And you see, I never really thought about life like that until I started with walking with God. I never thought about who is watching me or who is, you know, but when somebody comes to you and they say, Hey, you know, I just want to tell you that this thing that you shared the other day really helped me or whatever. That's when you start to realize that you're where God wants you to be. And so, um, that scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse four, and then I saw that all of the toil and skill with which man works comes from man's envy of his neighbor. And it's like, man, basically what they're saying is all of the ambition and the drive that you have is only fueled by your comparison of your neighbor. It's only fueled by your envy of where somebody else is and what somebody else has and it's sad because if you think about it a lot of your ambition and your grind to do better and be better and go harder sometimes really does come from you looking around at what everybody else has thinking that you should have the same thing so with all of that being said i want to talk real quick about um, a timing for everything and ecclesiastes really sums it up perfectly in chapter three and i'm going to read all of it because it's really short but you're going to understand what I'm saying. So Ecclesiastes chapter three, starting at verse one, for every thing, there is a season and a time for every matter under the sun, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, and a time for war and a time for peace. For me, that right there brought it all home. So as I sat here at four o'clock this morning wondering why I was up, it was really because God was trying to answer the question to the frustration that I've been dealing with for weeks now, which is timing. Because the plans that I have for my life are, are nothing like the plan that God had for my life. So where I'm at right now is not where I envision myself. When I look at my life seven years, uh, it's not, not even, well, seven years ago, look at my life seven years ago, I'm not where I thought I would be. I look at my life seven months ago before my breakup and I'm not where I thought I would be. So as you go through life, you're going to come into seasons where you're like, God, this is not where I plan to be. This is not where I want it to be. And God is sitting up saying, well, if you would have trusted me in the first place and if you trusted my timing, you would know that it doesn't matter where you want to be. And so right now I'm looking at my life over a span i'd say since i graduated high school and i'm like man look at the time i wasted look at where i'm at and i'm realizing that none of that matters because what i'm doing in this season where i'm at in this season is where god has me to be because there's an assignment all of us have an assignment on our life and this season is hard for me right now it's like one of the hardest i've never been more stressed out 
I've never been more discouraged. I've never been more frustrated. I have never been more lonely in my life. I have never suffered as hard. I've never run into as many tests back to back to back as I am now. My heart was never broken as bad as it was seven months ago. And I, I've been through some difficult things. I mean, I've God has really delivered me from some things, but those things that hurt me were to bring me to this season where I would suffer so that I would know how to get through this, this season, this season of my life is all about growth. And there's a, let's see, there's a, a verse that's specific to that. And it is, let's see, Ecclesiastes chapter three, and it is verse Two, as a matter of fact, a time to plant and then a time to pluck up what is planted. Okay. And then let's see if we go down. There's a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow. Now, for me, those three verses really hit home because this is a season of my life where it feels like I'm constantly being torn. I'm constantly being ripped up. I'm constantly losing and having to sacrifice. God is constantly testing my patience and and like buffeting me and i am constantly constantly losing things constantly having to give up things and this is a season of my life where that's difficult i'm single i finally got my own place again after seven years of struggling to get back to that place and I, I don't have the job that I wish I had. I don't always have the income and the means that I wish I had. And I'm sitting back like, God, I know you're doing something. But tell me what's going on with this timing. And tell me, what like, what am I supposed to do? And I found myself asking God this morning, Lord, what am I supposed to be doing in this season? Like, tell me, because I don't feel like I'm doing what I should be doing. I don't feel like I'm doing everything I could be doing. And God said to me, you're doing exactly what I want you to do. Sometimes we try to get ahead of God. We're not satisfied with where we are. So we feel like we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing based on our idea of where we should be. The reality of it is you working a job that you don't like, you having to go through that breakup you never thought you'd have to go through, you having to suffer and pass the test that you don't really want to have to deal with, that's exactly what God has called you to do. And we run into trouble because we constantly try to run from the season that we're in and we constantly try to find ways to weasel out of it and get around it. And God is saying, the more you run, how many of y'all grew up getting whoopings? I did. I grew up getting whoopings. And my mama would always say, the longer you run, the worse it's going to hurt. The more you're going to get hit. And I'm going to have to start all over on my count. Y'all, the longer you run from God and the longer you run from this season that you're in, the worse it's going to hurt. The longer you're going to be in that season because you're going to have to start over. Every time God takes you through some things and builds you up, right? And you pass a couple of tests and then it gets hard and you give up. You got to start all over. You have to rebuild what it was that you spent time building with God. And so this really blessed me. And I might not have been able to adequately articulate what I'm trying to say. But the meaning behind this book of the Bible really blessed my heart this morning. And for me to feel so lost and just be laying there in the bed like, Lord, lead me somewhere. Like, I need some answers. I need some encouragement because I'm having a hard time. How many of y'all out there feel like y'all want to give up right now? I know there are some days where I get up and I cry my whole way to work, my whole drive to work. I cry and I pray and I'm like, Lord, I promise you, I don't think I have another day of this left in me. I don't think I have another day of the inconvenience that it, that I have to deal with to work this job that I am grateful for. But if I'm being honest, I feel like I'm meant to do more and, and I really don't want to be at this job anymore. And I, I really want more out of life, but I can't afford to further that right now. Or I really want to be somewhere else, but now I'm having to rebuild what I messed up seven years ago. And I also want to tell you that it takes this long to ruin your life. <laughs> it takes this long to make a mistake that takes you this long y'all can't even see it no more because that's how long it is takes you this long to fix i did things when i graduated high school and i'm still paying for them and i don't i don't mean monetary i mean people really don't think that what you do to you know yesterday affects you tomorrow it's true what you do 
10 years ago will affect you 20 years from then. And I made some very bad choices and decisions when I graduated high school that are still affecting me seven years later, eight years later. I'm still rebuilding. I'm still bouncing back. And so when this says that basically God has a timing for everything, it blessed my soul because I don't like what's going on in my life right now. But to know that there's a reason and there's a purpose and that God is ultimately using it to further me and get me where he has for me to be, that blessed me. Because knowing that God has a reason and a plan and an intention for every part of your life, even the painful parts, really does give you the strength to continue pushing forward and knowing that this might hurt right now, but it's serving a purpose. Like there's a reason for it. And so as I read that and I, you know, basically saw, hey, there's a time for you to have to work hard. There's a time for you to be able to sow seed. And then there's a time where you have to do the work to be able to sow it. There's a time where, you know, you pluck and you work hard and you struggle and you fight. And then there's a time for you to harvest that. There's a time for you to pull that up. And there's a time for you to reap the benefit of whatever hard work you did. But everything is in God's timing. So God said to me this morning, you know, yes, you you made some mistakes. You took some detours, but even your detours were part of my plan. So I just want to tell you this morning that this afternoon, if you were like me and you maybe didn't make the best choices and you may have made some wrong turns or left turns, please understand that even your detours, even your wrong turns were part of God's right turns for you. Even the seasons in your life that are painful, that hurt, that you're tired of, that you wish you didn't have to endure, there is a reason for that season. So if you are going through something in your life and you're wondering how to get through it or you're feeling discouraged or you're feeling like giving up, please go and take some time to read. If you read nothing else of Ecclesiastes, please take the time to go read Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3 through about chapter 4. Those two chapters together really blessed me this morning. And I didn't stop. I actually read the whole book because really when you're so desperate for God and so hungry for God, a little bit of word it won't do. You find yourself lost in the word when you start finding comfort and answers to your questions. So um, I know this is really short and I was probably all over the place and I'm really sorry about that, y'all. But I had to share that because that's kind of where I am in my life right now. And I really felt like that will bless somebody else because ministry, this is my dream. Um, but it's just starting off and it's not taking off as quickly as I wanted to. And so we get discouraged because when we find our dream or when God reveals our purpose to us, if it doesn't move as quickly as we think it should move, then we think we're doing the wrong thing. Um, if it doesn't take off and, and, and if it's not presented as quickly as we want it to be, then we think, Oh God, I must be doing the wrong thing. Did I hear you right? When, and, and God is like, you heard me right, but you got to work hard. Everything is not easy. And this generation, we are so microwavable. We want everything quick, fast, in a hurry right now. I want I want it done. I want it all now. And God is like, nope, you got to work hard. There's a season. You got to crawl before you walk, for real. So there's going to be a season of your life where you're crawling. And it's going to hurt. <laughs> and it's going to be frustrating. And then you gradually get up and you can... You can kind of, like babies, you can pull up on something a little bit and then you'll be able to get up and walk and then you'll be able to run. But everything in life is a stage and a season and it has a set time and it works together for your good. And so um, just don't don't get discouraged if you're in a season of your life and you feel like, I have no idea why I'm going, why I'm going through this and I'm really frustrated with this season. Please understand that... Um, it's all part of God's plan. Like Ecclesiastes says, everything, there's a reason and a time and a season for everything under the sun. So I hope, I really truly hope that that encouraged you all today. Um, if you have any questions about what I said, or if you want any pointers, or if you, I try to type it up. I've been behind on my blog. I do try to type up a study guide though, with the scriptures and stuff that I um, share when I do these Bible studies. So if you just have any questions or you want to talk about the book of Ecclesiastes, or you want to go over some of the um, scriptures, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, some of you all have my number. Some of you don't. You can send me a message. You can, um, 
you know, I'm on Twitter. You can message me on here. You can email me. You can go to my website, whatever you want to do. Uh, but I really hope this bless somebody. I know that I'm not a preacher, but all of us have been called to share the word. Um, and so if you have any questions or you just want to talk about it or you're going through the same thing and you need somebody to talk to, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I love you all and I hope you have a good day.